very much. Joining us now, Cuba. one of the three lawmakers who went to Cuba to pick up Alan Gross, Democratic Congressman Chris Van Hollen of Maryland. Uh, Chris, I guess that must have been quite an experience. Um, what do you make of the latest developments? Uh, it was uh, an incredible experience. Uh, you know, Alan's wife, Judy Gross, uh, has been working every day for the last five years to try to free her husband from Cuban prison. Uh, so it was an honor uh, to be able to join with her on the airplane uh, down to Cuba to pick up Alan. And when everybody walked in the door and saw Alan, uh, he's a skinny, frail guy, but he had a big smile on his face and you could see he finally realized that the day had come because there have been some ups and downs along the way in terms of the effort uh, but yesterday it was real and we're really glad to have him home Mike Barnacle Congressman one of the uh, one of the many benefits that might accrue to the 11 million people living on the island of Cuba has been to we've, we've talked about it earlier today the economic benefits in terms of cash sent to families in Cuba but what I want to know from you is the medical benefits that could perhaps uh, arrive to the Cuban people. The access, more access to medicines, more access to state-of-the-art medicine that could perhaps save people lives. It's our understanding that things like that have to be approved by the Congress of the United States. It has to go through Senate Foreign Relations Committee, House Foreign Relations Committee. What's the timetable for this? Uh, well, Mike, we're... we're process of trying to sort out exactly what measures can take place under the president's executive order. Clearly, more travel, as you said, some additional trade, uh, at least in communications equipment, to try and open up uh, Cuba. Uh, I, I believe that the president can provide some additional medical uh, supplies under this um, executive action. But clearly, to lift the full embargo, you would need congressional action. And I think we all understand that that's not going to happen uh, yeah. in the very short run. But the measures the president took yesterday on their own, I think, will go a long way to trying to open up uh, Cuba and provide more of the kinds of things that you're talking about. All right. Chris Van Holland, thank you so much. We greatly appreciate it. Now let's bring in from Miami, Republican representative from Florida, Congressman Mario diaz Velarde. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. Obviously, you don't think this is a good idea. Why? Well, because a couple things. The president and the administration, the Obama administration, has been saying that they would not do an exchange for Alan Gross. Alan Gross is an innocent man who was sentenced to prison by a totalitarian regime. Um, and so the president has been saying that they weren't going to do that, that that would have been bad for U.S. national security interests. And then they've done exactly what they said was going to be a problem for U.S. national security interests with the now pretext that there's one more included in that exchange. That's part of the problem. It puts Americans at risk everywhere because now everybody knows that if you kidnap an American or you hold them hostage, that President Obama will deal with you and will give you multiple concessions. That's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is this. Look, the problem in Cuba is not the United States. The problem that Cuba has is a regime for half a century that is a totalitarian Marxist regime that violates human rights, that oppresses its people, that murders its own people, particular those who are freedom-seeking um, opposition leaders, dissidents. And what the president has done is given everything that the Castro dictatorship has been asking for, begging for, pleading for, all right. and lobbying for, this president has given uh, we have that Donnie dictatorship here. He has a all it wanted question. to, Donnie, getting Con very, right, very little response. We, we, we only have Con so much Con time. Congressman, Donnie. Congressman, to sit and, and just look at the last 50 years and continue as is when it has been nothing but a failure versus taking a step to open the door to the future, to liberating 11 million Cubans, to bringing them into the 21st century. How do you argue with that, with the argument that we are giving in to terrorists? It, it is such a flawed argument. This is not ISIS. This is a country 90 miles away. This has been long coming. And aren't you just giving us the typical Republican, I have to say this, versus... Well, and, this is, uh, Mario, Democrats also disagree with this too, right? Oh, yeah, this is a, there's bipartisan objections to what the president has done. And it's interesting, interesting. I mean, it's a little naive on your part to say that now the Cuban people have been liberated. Excuse me? 
liberated? Uh, would you say you it's tell maybe me, a, a step second, in that second. direction? How can you say that the Cuban people have been liberated when the Cuban people are suffering from great repression, when arrests have doubled in this last year, and the response of the President of the United States is to give concessions after concession? And by the way, there is no secret that the Castro brothers have been asking for what the President has just given them. And what is, is the rest of the world, what is the United States getting and the Cuban people getting in response for these concessions? Frankly, very little. Look, again, you might believe that the Cuban people have been liberated, but then you no, are obviously living in I believe it's certainly a major La -La step in that direction versus putting our head in the sand and continue uh, with what clearly what has not worked over the last five decades. Uh, to you say know, I, that I, we're I, not walking in that direction is naive on your part, Congressman. I, I like how now you're changing your tune. So now you're saying that they have not been liberated. At least I like the fact that you're correcting yourself. No, I'm not telling you this. Why are you saying anything like that? I said it is a move towards liberating the people of Cuba versus staying where we were. Is that is that not correct? Is this going the opposite direction? Are we this putting is them not under liberating. more pressure? Doing All right, Maria. This is not liberating the people of Cuba. This is giving concessions to the Castro regime that the Castro regime has been asking for. Now, I'm sure that you thought it was a good deal to do pressure, to do business with South Africa, because that was liberating the people of South Africa. I think that was an aberration, and I think that was helping the regime in South Africa. The reality is that we don't do business with Iran because it's a terrorist state. We shouldn't do business with a terrorist state 90 miles away just because that regime Congress takes an American hostage, requires uh, concessions from the United States, and now President right, Obama, Mario like he's done consistently, Fi has given everything, all the concessions that that regime has asked Mike for. Barnacle. Congressman, one question. If not now, when? Look, the sanctions are there for a couple of reasons. Number one is deny funds so they don't do acts of terrorism around the world. That has worked. And number two is it's the leverage that the United States has so that when there is a change, when Raul Castro, who's in his 80s, and Fidel, who is even older, also in his 80s, move along, it's the, it's, the, it's the pressure, the leverage that we have to actually demand and request and pressure for a democratic transition. And remember, the sanctions go away when only three conditions are met. You tell me which ones of these three conditions which we should not demand. Freeing all political prisoners, not just a handful that President Obama wants to have freed. Number two is a lot for basic freedoms, freedom of the press, uh, labor unions, political parties, and number three, start the process towards election. And then all the sanctions go away. It's the leverage to have all a right. democratic transition. The president has just given the Castro regime, getting, okay. frankly, very little in response, everything that they have ever wanted. Congressman Mario diaz Ballard, thank you very much. He looks he looks an awful lot like this guy that's uh, yeah, on the our rundown. show. And run He's the rundown guy. Have you ever seen that rundown guy? Oh, my God. <laughs> you look like the rundown guy. All right. There goes the neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, no. Great to see you as always. It up. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And President